and it goes to the Kagmagari upstairs. Everything has a kind of reason for being and a potential. And should be recognised in its rather unexciting value. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not really. I haven't quite got it right yet. Yeah. Valuing the ordinariness of something. Yeah, I think the humankind is often obsessed with perfection and the best and the Chinese chip in there and all of that. And I think I'm more attached to the grassroots and the mediocre, in a way. But the sprint mill collection, or what I say myself, which is a phrase I use far too often, um, don't know I need to qualify, but it, I think it has a sort of a, you might think this is a bit pompous and grand to say so, as a sort of political um, manifesto message, in that I am, I am quite a left-wing thinking person, and, 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 and don't believe in a controlled, free, um, centralised society. I think each person should be their own government, as it were, and work out how to run their lives on their terms of reference, rather than some outsider's terms of reference. So, um, in this context, I worry a lot about the wickedness of the marketplace, selling to the person who's got the most money at an auction or, 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 or the highest bidder. And in this context, again, one of the things that we shared at our discussion last time, and Rotti and I put our pen up in, is what happens to the, our places after we're dead and gone. Because Butty will tell you that when the motorway through, her father said, that's breaking my heart, because it went right through their mill field, mm -hmm. and a week later he had a heart attack and died. I'm older than my wife, so I'm likely, but not necessarily, will go first. Um, we invested on the same day, possible, but that's another story. Um, but when we're dead and gone at the moment, um, yeah, they used to say that, uh, uh, if you get home quicker, the bugger should have you after that, and you say, no. <laughs> Whether or not one might be able to hold Sprint Mill in particular and its contents in some sort of trust format for um, everyone in the future to come and enjoy uh, the space rather than they have to sort of take it all apart, um, divide it up, convert it into um, timeshare units, you know, whatever. Um, I'm, it's a big issue as to whether one should do that or leave it for them to decide, because in a way I'm imposing on them by it would be setting up a trust. But if I could talk it through with the children, um, and they were keen... We'd still pat, turn plasticine with a pair of rulers up into little oh. pats of butter. Right. Um, Did you use Scotch hands? Uh, uh, I mean... Yeah. With, with some jam and bread and some big pieces it, yeah. of cheese and yeah, apple well, pasty. In winter time, you know, the your socks, your rolls yeah. and stuff in That's the, right, yeah. If you cut them off and yeah. put that round the tarp, it's warm, yeah. warm yeah. Yeah. That's where the tarp would be, and that's where the tarp part would be. He would divide it up and build on there, and he would make the money out of it. And I just sort of feel, why have I had my life here? And why take away? This strong anti marketplace feeling that I have. We're, we're just well, thinking of called Maidensdale. Right. Right. It's still called Maidensdale, so we used to be, have to be maidens dancing in the bottom of the Maidensdale. <laughs> and my dad didn't get any tea. You know, it was only a three o'clock tea to put him on till supper time. Yeah. So those paintings were done when it was a working mill then? Yes. Yeah. This is Butch's snug where she works in the winter time. And I'm sure Butch is the same. It's just, it's, it's, it's my way of sort of celebrating the wonder and awe and one loveliness of being alive and what a privilege it is to me. So there are some really powerful messages, I think, that want relaying to the troubled bit of the world. And we do live in one horrendously troubled world. When you see what's going on in the Middle East between uh, Palestine and Israel, and in, I'm reading a book about Africa and how that's been torn apart, apart by people who just have a, a desire to go out and fight and kill, and I, I'm, I am bewildered by all of that. And although I say myself, there I go again, I like to feel that the message of the Kagmagri, etc., this place, is a celebration of getting beyond all of that. So there is a sort of a political message in the art cultural, um, expressive side of, of what there is here.
And the same with the contents of Milton Mill. That can be used as a, as a way of inviting people to get money real, you know. <laughs> Stop strapping a piece of um, explosive to your waist and going in amongst some innocent people and letting it all off. And I, I, I'm, I'm so affronted by all that, of that sort of thing. I'm sure we all are that are here today. Do you see what I'm trying to say? I kind of feel... <laughs> I am bewildered by mm. the wickedness in yeah. humankind, really. Yes. And what we're doing to the earth. Yeah, exactly so. Yeah. And I, although I say it myself, but in this context, I like to feel that the sprint mill holding is a little sort of microcosm example of a way of life that is holding hands with planet Earth rather than exploiting it and denuding it and spoiling it and yeah. all this idea of fracking and putting chemicals oh. into the ground and squeezing yet another bit of stuff out, you know, literally like squeezing a dish cloth out. Like, oh no, please, please, we need to go in a new direction. <laughs> we need to review uh, the impact we're having, like you were saying, on planet Earth. And yeah. Maybe there's a big, big discussion to be had at government level about moving on a bit, really. I don't think many people know about it. I heard some recordings the other day of some of his vocal sounds that he produced, which he reckoned were on a par with some of his collage works. And there was an attempt to imitate him, but it was just um, making weird collection of um, ad-libbing sounds with his vocal cords and his voice. No words in it. <laughs> like that, you know, plus the rest, you know. And someone might think, um, that guy is completely around the bend, but I took the completely other extreme and I thought he was completely and utterly connected to the potential of just using his voice way beyond the conventional. And I suppose in a way, I'm trying to find my way into that at this place, is getting away from... You know, in the, in the 60s in particular,